21 points a ball game this year, and we play a good, strong defense. And this is the kind of game we like to play, but I think Jerry's got different ideas about it. He's a low scoring. Uh, good, and thank you very much. Good luck to you all the rest of the way. Thank you. Jim Maxidon, the coach of Effingham, and coming in to join us now is the coach of Chicago De La Salle, Jerry Tokar, Tokars. And uh, coach, uh, congratulations on getting here. We're very happy to be here. I, I uh, just hope we can play a little better than we did last year, and uh, I'd like to really do something for our fans and our school. Coach, tell us a little bit about your team personnel-wise and what you try to do offensively and defensively. Well, we do try to set the tempo. We really don't know which way we're going to go with it yet. Uh, we've got a few things we have in mind, but uh, we got to see really what kind of a team this is. Uh, you hear a lot of things, you know, ourselves, but a couple of reports, and I know they're a fine ball club. Tell me about uh, the uh, the tempo. Is an interesting thing. Scores more than 90 points a game, so obviously they like a fast tempo. You can play either way. Will you try to take them out of their game? Well, I don't know. We we can play fast and we can play slow. I'm not saying we play. Uh, the thing is, we have to find out which one uh, is more effective for us, and uh, hopefully we find out before the you know the 32 minutes is over. Tell us a couple of uh, your top players and uh, what we can look for from that. Well, we have a, a senior guard who we're very proud of, uh, Danny Birch, about 6'2". He's uh, a lot of the glue of the team. Also, we got a boot. He's six foot six. Mike Williams, he had a cracked ankle, and he's just rounding out into shape. And we're happy you're here. Good luck to you. Gary Tokar is the coach of Chicago De La Salle. And now, let's go back to Jim Turpin. First game is over. In case you've just joined, it was won by Aurora West by one. Tremendous basketball game, and the, the coach is here, and his heart has uh, slowed down a bit. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you very much, Jim. Dick Campbell, this uh, ball game we saw just a moment ago, before the game, both coaches said these two teams are mirrors of each other, and it certainly seemed that way. It really was that way, Jim. It was a point and the lead late in the ball game, and that, uh, you like to have that, don't you, Gordy, when you're playing in matchup zone? Man. Well, that's true, Dick, because... I think it gave us a little bit more of an opportunity to drop back inside. We didn't have to be quite as concerned, uh, you know, at, at their outside shooting, but uh, with the exception, of course, of uh, 22, Sampson. But uh, and, uh, not to coast in, but uh, put a little pressure on the other team. Gordy, I thought uh, Jeff Fichtel was just from that all the time. I would say all from around Christmas time on, he has really showed a lot of aggressiveness. Last year, Jeff was a little inconsistent, uh, timid at times, but the second half of the season this year, he has not been timid. He's uh, been very aggressive on the board. Well, he's a complete player. He, uh, he does it on the boards. He was outstanding there. He takes the ball to the hole on occasion, and uh, he chases down those loose balls. And then he passes well. If you throw the ball into him, he's going to do something pretty solid with it. Yes, he did. I, I was very pleased with the way he took the ball to the basket against Cole today. Uh, he was a little bit uh, smaller than Cole, and uh, maybe couldn't jump quite as well, but uh, he was he made some nice moves going to the basket and after Cole got uh, two or three fouls on him this is what we wanted him to do take it to the, to the basket a big bucket I thought that you got and I'm not sure it didn't come off a timeout when you backdoored with Finley uh, did you save that for late in the ball game or did it just come up that way no we just wanted to uh, work the clock a little bit and uh, I think they were starting to get onto that pattern a little bit and they were trying to beat him on his cut Raymond recognized it and fortunately uh, David Heiss recognized it so he just uh, back cut to the basket nice buckets off your offense uh, you went across the top on that alley-oop to pick goal uh, twice, I think. Uh, there were a lot of nice seen you do that many times. Thank you, Dick. Thank you, Gordy. I'm sorry we're just about out of time here, but congratulations to you, and certainly good luck tomorrow. Okay, thank you very much, Jim. Thank you, Gordy. Let's get to our shot now with Sullivan, who's the executive secretary of the Illinois Principals Association. Well, we just had an exciting ball game, but I want to spend a little time here, if we can, talking about the Illinois Principals Association. Just uh, what is it? Thank you, Jim. We have all three levels of the principalship in the association, elementary, junior high, and secondary. And we're affiliated with both national, national elementary, national secondary. We're affiliated over at the Illinois State University. I serve as a faculty member of the Illinois State University, assigned to the principalship in Illinois. And, uh, the university can bring their expertise to the middle management. The middle management back some of their problems to them. It's, it's been a real plus for principals and education in general. And Bill, just what is your relationship with the Illinois High School Association then? 
The main relationship, Jim, lies in the fact that it's the high school principal that's the voting member on all IHSA decisions. Many people wrongly believe that this is a duty left up to the uh, coach or the athletic director, and uh, this isn't right. It's uh, high school's responsibility. Thank you, Bill. Nice to see you. Good to have you here. Thank you, Dick Campbell. Well, here's the, the losing coach. I'm, I'm sorry to say that uh, somebody had to lose that terrific ball game, Wayne, but it was, uh, it was a great game, and uh, you're, you should be proud of your kids. Yeah, this is typical of so many of our ball games. The only difference is we were able to come out on top, but I thought our kids battled back and just did a super job. Uh, it was about the type of game that I thought. I thought it would be a close ball game because we matched up size-wise and also physically very well, and it was just a matter who got the breaks at the end. That last shot, it appeared to be on target. It looks like you can't ask for much better than that. He really had it up there strong. No, we sure could. We had exactly the same situation in our last schedule ball game, and uh, Michael Bryan came down and put it right in. When he left it, I, I just went through my mind. I thought we had another last second victory. And it's, uh, so we got to that. You can't ask for any better shot than that. We got the shot we wanted, so that, it just didn't go down. Well, Dick Campbell and I were talking about this, but it takes a lot of courage for a young man at the, this stage of his career and with all that at stake to, uh, you know, to put that ball up there at that time. But he, uh, he had no hesitation at all. No, he sure did, and he went up and, and shot the ball well. You can tell usually if the ball's going to go in when he leaves his hand. I honestly thought it was in, eh? because he had, it was uh, directly in line. It was just a, just a fraction too hard, and you certainly can't fall. In fact, it's their credit that they got confidence and ability that he will take the shot in that situation. It appeared to us that your ball club was a little cold on shooting, particularly from the outside. Otherwise, you might have had a one. Yeah, we're a much better shooting team. We've been averaging close to about 52, 53 percent for the year, and uh, we had shots that just wouldn't drop. I think a lot of that was due to West defense, but part of it we just we just couldn't get the ball to drop today. Thanks very much for coming on. I know it's a tough thing to do. Congratulations on a very good season. Thank you. Our second game is coming up, and we'll be back to check the starting line. Pause five seconds for station identification. You are watching WICS Channel 20, Springfield, Illinois. Chicago De La Salle Institute Meteors and the Effingham Flaming Hearts in game two of the quarterfinals. Here's the PA announcer, Tom Prince. in his 13th year at the school, James Maxidon, with a career record of 246 wins, 102 losses. The team members for Effingham, number 11, Steve Bouchou. Number 13, Gail Higgs. Number 21, Chuck Keller. Number 25, Jeff Wolfer. Number 31, Ted Gravenhorst. Number 33, Jim Shadowin. Number 51, Don Deeker. And now the starting lineup for the Flaming Hearts of Uppingham. At a forward, the senior, 63, number 53, Dallas Orsborn. Here's Dallas Orsborn, averaging 8.6. He shoots 54% from the field. The other forward, a senior, 65, number 41, Dale Groupie. Here's an outstanding player, 41, Dale Groupie, averaging 15.7. Starting the center for the Flaming Hearts, a junior, 7 feet, 2 and a half inches tall, number 45, Uwe Block. The pronunciation is Uve Block, as in Mop. Uve Block averages 17.3. We'll have a lot to say about him. Brad Neat, point guard, 8.3 points a game. And the other guard is senior, 65, number 43, Mitch Arnold. Here's the great Mitch Arnold, averaging 25.4 points a game for the Effingham Flaming Hearts, 28 and 1. The meteor. the meteor is at Pima Sano High School from Chicago. The head coach of the Meteor, Jerry Tokar, said it is 19 years at the school, 345 wins, 144 losses. The team members for De La Salle, number 10, Dave Fields. 
Number 14, Charles Nigo. Number 21, Mark Payon. Number 25, Scott Wisniewski. Number 34, Ron Dickens. Number 41, Tom Nigo. Number 42, Tom Duddleston. And now let's meet the starting lineup for the Meteors of De La Salle High School. At a forward, a senior, six feet two, number 20, Jerry Tokars. Jerry Tokars is the son of the coach, plays guard and forward, is a quarterback on the court. The other forward is a junior, 64, number 33, Bernard Cole. Bernard Cole averages 10.1 points a game. At center for the Meteors, a junior, 66, number 23, Mike Williams. Out with an injury early, he's back in full force, averaging 14 a game. At one guard for De La Salle, a senior, 62, number 24, Dan Burridge. Here's an outstanding player, averaging 16.7, Dan Burridge. And the other guard, a senior, six feet tall, number 11, Dave Calloway. Here's Dave Calloway, averaging 7.6. He shoots 50% from the field. The De La Salle Institute Meteors uh, will be in the white uniforms, 23 and 6 out of the Chicago Catholic League. Of course, out of Chicago and Cook County. The Effingham Flaming Hearts, 28 and 1 out of the Mid-State Conference. They are south of Champaign-Urbana, south of Charleston, Mattoon, Effingham, Illinois, Effingham County. The officials for tonight's game are Alan Otto and Larry Petty, both of Elk Grove, Illinois. Now, one of your network sponsors is DeKalb Ag Research. He just had the opening tip and it went to Effingham. They're in the red. LaSalle, De LaSalle in the white. And there's the Ube block down low at seven, two and a half, stepped on the end line and out of bounds. Ube Block is a West German exchange student. Seven, two and a half, 230, plays center for Effingham. And now De La Salle with the basketball in the backcourt is Bernard Cole. 24 is Dan Burridge, one of their all-stars. He's a fine, fine-looking basketball player. 20, Jerry Tokars into Cole on a turnaround off the board and in. Bernard Cole. Effingham down by two. They like to score. They get over 90 a game. Let's see what De La Salle will do tempo-wise. You heard Jerry Tokars before the game said they'd like to control the tempo. Don't know whether it'll be fast or slow. Both teams in uh, in a pressing defense. Three-quarter court diamond and one for Effingham, and it was it looked like it was a man-to-man -man for uh, De La Salle. We'll check it again next trip down. Blop is the tallest player in Illinois high school history, setting the low post. Here's a high lob downstairs. Mitch Arnold threw it away, intended for uh, a groupie. Threw it, intended for Mitch Arnold. Arnold is 43 in the red. Here's a long pass down the court to Cole on the left. He's going to go to the basket. Steps in, puts it off the board, and doesn't get it. And Arnold rebounds. This is Mitch Arnold averaging nearly 26 a game. Shoots his first time and missed. Ball loose on the floor. Picked up by Groupie. Knocked away by Chicago De La Salle. It is his own defense un underneath uh, uh, for De La Salle. There's the shot outside. Groupie, his first, goes in. Dale Groupie. He hit nearly 16 a game. Effingham presses on the full court. De La Salle is called or charged for traveling. It had to be one. The whistle was against Dave Calloway in the front court. This, uh, and yeah, we'll take a look at it here. He, down the court, he didn't have control of the ball, and uh, before the contact, he juggled it, and it was a violation. All right, the ball handling guard, Brad Neat for Effingham, number 15. And on the left wing there is Mitch Arnold. He's the shooter. He's 6'5", in the block at 7, 2 and a half. His shot, no. Up over the top when he wants to shoot that ball down in the basket, there's not much you can do. He just reached up to that 7, 2 and a half hit, uh, inch height and reached over the top, but missed the shot. He was 12 for 12 in the super sectional as De La Salle gets a shot at the foul line. Not good by Tokars and a whistle. Foul on Mike Williams. Mike Williams, he's had some foul trouble. Uh, this is a young man that was out from uh, the Christmas tournament all the way up to the regional, and he's quite a player, but he's having a little trouble getting back into the swing of things as he gets his conditioning back, gets back into the flow of the game. All right, this is Brad Neat working against Callaway in the front court. De La Salle in the white, Effingham in the red, 
Uve blocked, turns and shoots. He got it in. Uve with a nice soft touch there, turned to his inside. Ball got a little bit of iron, but it rolled in for him. 29 in their last game. Effingham leads De La Salle 4 to 2. We've just started the second quarter final game. Peoria Richwoods was ousted by Aurora West in a pulse pounding 44 43 first game. Was that a thriller? This is a zone One by Effingham. Burrett shoots. And Mike Williams rebounds. Now Block has it. You know, when he dunks the ball at Effingham, they call it sauerkraut thunder. <laughs> There's a wild pass down the court, and De La Salle has the the ball Effingham's third turnover here's a look at that press now the diamond and one it's more of a contained press they're not putting a lot of pressure on they're just trying to maybe trying to step up the tempo but it seems tends to slow things down a little bit that goes Cole down the lane finger rolls it up and in block fouled him I think it'll count Bernard Cole took it right to the big fella got the basket and to go after the three here we come down the lane took it right up Lop held his ground pretty well, but he uh, also, Cole kind of glanced off to the side and he got up into his arms. Four points for Cole, he's at the line. This is the third trip to the Elite Eight in the last four years by De La Salle. They ousted top rank Proviso East, third straight year. Cole, missed. De La Salle keeps the ball, Callaway comes out. Game is tied with five minutes to go in the first quarter. Mike Williams turns and block by block. They clear it out. Effingham looks to run. Pass tipped out of bounds by Chicago De La Salle. Apparently, with that block. I don't imagine Mike Williams had this happen to him too often. And he can stand far enough away and still reach back and make the block. Williams is 6'6", 220 himself, only a junior. Lop is a junior. The ball loose in the lane. Groupie walked. Dale Groupie, G-R-U-P-E, walked with the ball. Uh, one of the things that the coaches from Effingham said that uh, with the block shots of, of uh, Uve that uh, he blocks it and keeps it in play. He doesn't swat it out of bounds, and that's quite an asset. Four turnovers on Effingham. Downstairs, Williams! A slam dunk. There's the first stuff of the ball game. It was a nice dish off there. Cole to Williams. Mike Williams dunked it in. Six to four, De La Salle. Ruby wheeling in the front. Has control of it now. Up to meet. This is Mitch Arnold. Stop and pop. The battle for the board. Williams. Williams chases it down. There was a pack in there, and he came out of it. De La Salle looks like they're going to run with Effingham. They come down. Galloway shot no. Out of bounds to Effingham. How about that power dunk by Williams? Williams? Here it comes. Williams takes it up and got across it. It was very, very impressive stuff underneath where all that size is. Dick, you said it was the first one. And last week, but this time, we had about six in the Class A tournament, which was a big switch. Luther South danced on people's heads. Here's Neat coming to the right. These other teams can do it too, and we'll see more. Here's Neat outside right. And the rebound comes over to Callaway of De La Salle. This is a quicker lineup that Jerry Tokars has in here. He's gone with uh, Callaway, a six foot guard, in place of Wisniewski, a six fiver that he often starts. They feel they play with more intensity and, and better quickness. We'll see Scott Wisniewski, I'm sure, later in the game. Williams turns baseline and put it up with the left hand. Scooped underneath, made the move, uh, drew him up high, and then slipped underneath. Eight to four, that's four points by Williams, and he's a horse with a game, I'll tell you. Here comes Mitch Arnold, held by Burridge. Dan Burridge got a hold of Mitch Arnold on the move. Dan Burridge, a very important uh, catalyst and leader on this ball club for De La Salle. He picks up, he picks Jerry. up his first, and uh, it's the team second. Jerry Tokar is up saying something as Mitch Arnold shoots out of the corner. Williams the board. De La Salle will not look for the break. They'll, they'd rather do it right here as they are. Walk the ball up the court, get organized, and run a disciplined offense. The big guy, Mike Williams, 6'6", 220, and he was out with an injury at the Christmas tournament. He didn't come back to the regionals for De La Salle, but here they are, and he's back healthy. Williams, uh, it looked like uh, Ube had that, uh, had that ball clear, but Williams came in on top of knocked it away. Now there's a timeout at 2.56 to go. De La Salle, 8, and Effingham, 4. One of your network sponsors is Country Companies Insurance. Get the insurance man. Wayne Carey? No, 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 he's life. Uh, 
when Jerry Tokars, the coach of Chicago de La Salle, took a look at Effingham's size, he said, this is a good game to give my assistance while I coach from the press box. Of course, he was kidding, and de La Salle's gone out to an 8-4 lead. The Flaming Hearts on defense. The Meteors with the ball. That's Callaway. It looks like a 1-3-1 zone that Effingham is in. Uh, some flexion on the perimeter, but uh, neat out there at the point. Uve's in the middle of it. There's the shot at the foul line blocked by Uve Blot. Number two on Dan Burridge. They can't, uh, can't afford to get him in foul trouble. He's... Uh, Dan Burridge, number 24, picks up the personal shot. Shot block, he came in on, on the rear there, no doubt about it. Second foul on Burridge, third team foul on De La Salle. For uh, Effingham, we have a uh, replacement in the game, 11, Steve Bushu. Just come on, B-U-S-H-U-E, 5'6", senior, 140-pounder. He's got the ball, top of the key. The 1-3-1 one, one that uh, De La Salle's using also. Arnold shot, misses, and De La Salle rebounds. Mitch Arnold will likely get on track. He shoots 58% from the field and averages better than 25 a game for Effingham. They're down 8-4, to 2.15 to go in the first quarter. Here's a steal by Effingham, and Mitch Arnold has it. He lobs it down here to Groupie. Layup just missed. Groupie wasn't as close to the hoop as he thought he was. There was a look at Mitch Arnold's passing skills. We've heard a lot about that. He's, uh, he's a player that does it all. 14 and a half rebounds a game, uh, 25 points, uh, six, seven assists. There's Mike Williams going to the basket. How about that for a strong move? He took it to the inside, right to the big guy. He's not only big, he is quick. He's got six points. De La Salle leads by six, 10-4. 144 to go, first quarter. Second quarter final game. Frank Bassoni, Dick Campbell, and Jim Turpin. Hope you're enjoying the action from the assembly hall as Mitch Arnold pulls the trigger and can't find it. And De La Salle has the basketball in a six-point lead. Dan Burridge is uh, Mitch, uh, Mitch Arnold's counterpart is the other on the court. Rebounding, making a nice pass. Now a whistle and a foul on Steve Bushu of Effingham. First foul on Bushu and the second on the Flaming Hearts. Effingham County, the city's population 10,000. Schools pop uh, enrollment 945. The enrollment at De La Salle is 1150. Cole steps in, he dribbled the ball off his foot, picked off by Effingham. This is Mitch Arnold up ahead, and he's gonna try one on a shot, and he missed the works. Arnold looks a little puzzled as that shot went over the rim and into the hands of De La Salle. I think Mitch is about 0 for 4 from the field, and that was uh, an air ball, and I'm sure he doesn't do that very often. Outside is Burrich. Now Callaway's going to try one from 18. Didn't go. Uwe Blot picks off the board. And there's a foul on Cole of De La Salle at 51 seconds. Well, I don't know where that foul occurred because I was up there watching up in the stratosphere where the basketball was. Apparently Cole got into his body. Here it comes up. Well, actually, he did get on his arm. No, there's the crowd right there into the body. And 33, Jim Shadowins comes in for Effingham. 33 at the high post. Mitch Arnold goes out. Long, long shot. Not good by Brad Neat. Taken down by Bernard Cole of De La Salle. De La Salle 10-4. 33 seconds. Let's see if they go for one shot here. That's what Burrich says. One. How about the Flaming Hearts playing a high-low post with two redheads? <laughs> shot at the key by Jerry Tokars goes in. It's 12 to 4, De La Salle. And Effingham gets the ball up the court. Saved by... Nope, he didn't save it with 18 seconds. Effingham turns it over. The fifth turnover on Effingham. And it's clear that the Flaming Hearts haven't got their assembly hall legs yet. Effingham uh, averaging 91 points a ball game. Have four here after... Uh, uh, almost eight minutes of play. I'm sure it's the tempo they're not used to. And you think about that, they allow nine, uh, only 55 a game and score better than 91. Here's a steal in the backcourt by Effingham and a foul on Callaway of De La Salle. Bushu has forced uh, three turnovers right there. Uh, that's quite a play with 12 seconds to go. Really is. He's able to tie up Callaway, get a piece of it, and then Callaway reaches in, wants to tie it up, and he fouls. Not the kind of foul you'd like to have with uh, 12 seconds left. Fifth. Here's the uh, team foul, and now at the foul line goes uh, Steve Bushu. His free throw is not good. He shoots him at 80%. Didn't get that one. 10 seconds in the quarter. De La Salle's got a 12-4 lead. Six, 
five for Burrich with the ball. He's going to shoot it, I think. He turns and gets it off, and time didn't go. And that's the end of the first quarter of play. The score, Chicago De La Salle, a dozen, Effingham, four. And one of your network sponsors is DeKalb Ag Research. Effingham averages 23 points per quarter on the season. They managed only four that quarter. Shooting appears to be a little bit of a problem for Effingham. They're, uh, they're two for 12 in that quarter, and Mitch Arnold, their super shooter, with, their, with a 58% season average is 0 for 6. Williams against Uwe Block in the middle. And if you are trying to figure out if he's really that tall, yes, he is. Seven, two and a half center for Effingham. Uwe Block, here's the shot out of the corner. Droopy taken down by De La Salle. And Effingham can't buy a bucket early. They're, staying, cold. they're staying in that zone. Of course, uh, I think they've been in it all season long. He won a 12-4 lead. Or down 12-4. Here's a pass down low to Williams, who puts it off. And Mike Williams slapped one in off the bar. Williams making some nice quick moves inside. He's really taking the challenge of going to that big guy. Mitch Arnold gallops down, stops, pops, got it. There's his first one. Yeah, that might get Mitch started. He's going to do a lot of shooting in this assembly hall over the next four years. Uh, we'd like to see that he's able to find a home and he doesn't go away feeling it's a bad place to shoot. Well, Uppingham usually starts running before the concluding notes of the national anthem, and they've come out a little slower here because of their shooting. Here's Bernard Cole. Bernard in that high post, uh, making the big guy come to him, and if he does, he's going to dump it down inside. Nice, nice strategy. Here comes Uppingham, blocked by Williams, a field foul. Dynamite block. That's uh, Michael Williams, just a junior, 6'6", 220, has come to play today. These teams down here deliver 12 dimes on the dollar. 16 to 6, De La Salle. 6.35 to go in the first half. Callaway between the circles against the Effingham zone. A lot of factors here. Cole turns, nobody guarding him. He shoots it and block rebound. Well, there's just nobody guarding him at all that high post. Ruby handles the ball to Brad Neat. Effingham with it. Now they're down by 10. We're in the second quarter early in the game. Arnold goes baseline, tries another. Rupee fights for it with Callaway out of bounds. It took a while for the call, but there it is. Here's the shot, and the shot blocked by Williams off the backboard and out on the court. A, a super defensive basket defense. Hoop defender, they call him. 1968, Jim Maxidon brought an Effingham team here, 30 and 0 in the Elite Eight. They lost the first round to Galesburg. They're back this year. They've got a fine basketball team. De La Salle has a shot outside. No. Burrich rebounds in the lane and scores. Burrich doing some nice rebounding at both ends of the court. Now a whistle. A foul on De La Salle. Callaway got the call, I believe, in the back. Right, Dave Callaway reached in there on the trap, and uh, he, he doesn't think uh, that he did touch him, but there was no doubt about that, I don't believe. Second foul on number 11, Dave Callaway. This is Jeff Wolfer, W-O-E-L-F-E-R. Now we have a timeout for Effingham. It's 5.45 to go in the first half. It's 18 to 6 in favor of De La Salle. Frank, here's how those two ball clubs got here. First of all, in the regional tournament, Chicago De La Salle defeated Oak Park River Forest and Oak Park Fenwick. Then in the Hinsdale sectional, they beat a very good Proviso East team and the LaGrange Lions. Then the Aurora East Super sectional defeated Hoffman State's Conant by 58 to 36. The Flaming Hearts of Effingham defeated Newton and Alney in the Newton Regional. Harbordale and Mount Vernon in the West Frankfurt sectional. And then beat um, a very good East St. Louis Lincoln team in the Carbondale Super sectional, 74 to 58. But they're certainly off to a very, very slow start here. Our sponsors are happy to be able to bring you these tournament games on television. If you have any comments about our coverage, we'd love to hear from you. Just write High School Basketball, Box 1112, Bloomington, Illinois, 61701. That's High School Basketball, Box 1112, Bloomington, Illinois, 61701. Effingham Flaming Hearts of the Mid-State Conference, Chicago De La Salle of the Chicago Catholic League. 18 to 6 in favor of De La Salle with 5.45 to go. At the line, Jeff Wolfer. 
a six foot 150 pound senior he shoots free throws at 50 percent for the flaming hearts of course in red and white free throw is missed and mike williams climbs the board de la salle the more patient of the two teams offensively they average 61 they allow 51 a game Effingham zones extended further out on the court now. Yes, I think they can read that De La Salle is going to pull them out a little bit, too. They're uh, spreading the court a bit. And, uh, see if they can tempt them out and get some openings inside. A team that scores about 46 points a half has six with 5.15 to go. And part of that reason is the control tempo here by De La Salle. You never uh, fail to uh, uh, these players always impress me year in and year out the talent of these young men amazing oh that's right uh, Frank with uh, summer programs uh, the jumping abilities and uh, the, the year-round play of young men in this day and age uh, they just are great talent and the girls are very good too and they'll be on display next week next Saturday as we'll have the A and AA championship De La Salle, there you see Jim Maxidon of Effingham shouting to his team. Here's a nice pick down low. Burridge steps in and puts it up. He got it in, but called for walking first. Yes, right. Uh, made his little uh, pump fake there and slid both feet. He's got to keep both of them down, or at least one of them down. He lunged, lunged back in, and, uh, and he did travel on the play. Fourth turnover on De La Salle, and Steve Bouchou, 11, back in the Flaming Heart lineup. Bushu, uh, defensively, I think he's in there to try to stir things up out in the front. He's forced three turnovers already early in the ballgame as a sub off the bench. I look for Groupie and Mitch Arnold and Uwe Block to get the ball, do some scoring here. There's Mitch Arnold down low. He is hammered by Mike Williams. He got his money's worth there, Frank. Uh, they're, they're doing the same. That's the second foul on Williams. Here he comes Watches. up. Williams going up, and he follows right on through, and he gets arms, elbows belly buttons and everything that was within reach. Two points so far by Mitch Arnold, and he must wonder if that was football there for a hot minute. He really got stoked that time. Here's the shot. Not good. Mitch Arnold not only shoots 58% field goals, he's a 79% free throw shooter. And he missed two. And we have a whistle on a lane violation. There's a substitute throw coming up as De La Salle got themselves in the lane. A hat trick here now, Frank. One now, man. One. Arnold shoots it up and missed them all. He's got the ball back. He tries again. How about this? That rolls in. <laughs> That's persistence. That's staying with it. Never a doubt. 18 to 8. De La Salle over Effingham. 4.23 to go in the first half of play. Burch. Oh, we've got a man to man now. We see Effingham and a man to man. See what happens. See if they front Williams. Here's the pass down low to Williams. Flop is there. And it's off his hands and out of bounds. Callaway penetrated the middle, dropped it back down deep to Williams. Williams was going to make a move on Uve, and he lost the ball out of bounds. Uve Blot may be one of the few centers that can play behind his man down low. He can play behind and in front all at the same time. <laughs> He's a tenth. There's a lob inside, picked off by Williams. He stepped in front. Talk about fronting your man. Yeah, Williams is pretty formidable. They really need to keep him in the ball game, and he has uh, been foul prone at times. He certainly was last year. Tokars goes downstairs, and it's Burrich on a fade. Burrich's first bucket in the ball game. Uh, he's their leading scorer. He can play. Here comes Mitch. Look how quick the transition was made as Mitch Arnold socks it in for Effingham. 20 to 10. De La Salle, six points for Arnold. 3.29 to go in the first half. That man to man may shake the tempo up a little bit. I think maybe the shot will be put up a little quicker. One thing for sure, Effingham can score points in a hurry when they get hot. They're down 10, but they can score 10 in a blink of an eye. Burridge between the rings moves to the right. Calloway looks inside. There's Burridge. He plays baseline well. Calloway navigates outside and Cole exchanges. Good defense by Effingham. Right, very good. They're, they apparent, apparently can play the man-to-man. -man. They're getting after people and moving their feet around on the court very well. Active team. Arnold's way out on pole. They play tight out on the court. A lot of teams loosen up away from the ball more than that. Well, De La Salle is not to be panicked. They're going to handle a little bit and, and uh, maybe wear the defense or the willingness of the defense down a little bit. Look at Block. He yeah. can get out there and move, too. It's difficult at that height. There's a whistle and a foul on Effingham. 
back on Mitch Arnold. Foul on Mitch Arnold. 43. Yeah, here, here he comes driving at baseline, and, uh, and Mitch stepped in from the right side, made contact from the rear. Bernard Cole at the line. That's the first foul on Arnold, third team foul. Shooting violation, of course, gives Bernard Cole two. 63% foul shooter. Missed it. Foul shooting hasn't been good today uh, at all on, on any team so far, but of course, uh, in this game, we still got an awful lot of time. 237 first half. Missed two. I think there's a certain amount of getting used to the background here in the assembly hall, and uh, the high, traditional high school teams have shot very well down here, but sometimes that first quarter or half, uh, you're going to have a little trouble. Aurora West is in the final four here, and one of these teams tries to, Mitch Arnold throws it up and got fouled. Good play by Arnold, he had his man off his feet. That's going to be a factor in this ball game, I believe. Uh, here comes Mitch going to take it down the lane, going to lunge it up, he drew the foul on, on Williams. That's the third foul on Williams to talk about a factor. Here comes Wisniewski in to replace him. Scott Wisniewski, 6'5", 185. Senior averages 7.2. Now Wisniewski is tall at 6'5, but remember Williams goes 220. And remember that this Little South team uh, shared the title in the tough Chicago Catholic League without Williams. He was hurt all year, and these other five, the five are out there right now, uh, can really play together. The other night in the super sectional, they played very well when, when Williams was out. That's eight points for Mitch Arnold. He can score. Effingham trails by eight, 220 to go. The Meteors of Chicago De La Salle Institute with the basketball. Dan Burrich is the man outside. That's Cole, guarded by Arnold. Man to man by Effingham. They're running a little shuffle game here now. De La Salle getting pushed out on the court. They're not really getting into their offense. I don't know whether they're, they're trying just to handle the ball or whether they're getting shoved out there. That looks like some team's delay game, Dick. They're uh, exchanging high-low. Cole, here's a tip of a pass, nearly stolen. But here it is, a walking violation on Jerry Kokar. Kokar turned around, man was right there. He uh, stutter stepped, and it is a violation. That is the sixth turnover for De La Salle here in this first half. And Jerry Tokar doesn't do that often. He's a fine ball handler. And now Effingham tries to eat again into that lead. Mitch Arnold's at the high post. Uwe Blop at 7-2 goes down low. Ice, he swings to the other side as Arnold tries. And the rebound comes over to Scott Wisniewski, but he walks when Burrich was tied up with his own man. Yes, right. I think uh, Wisniewski and Burridge both on the ball, and that's the call. Two men on the same team. Jerry Tokars of De La Salle, a coach that I hope we don't lay an Easter egg down there. They're not doing so. The Flaming Hearts. Brad Neat has it. Way down low, intended for Mitch Arnold. Out of bounds to De La Salle. Trying to shove that thing in there deep, and uh, about three people got a piece of it, and the last one to touch it had a red shirt on. I wonder if they throw a, a lob or an alley-oop pass inside the block once in a while. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll see that somewhere along the way. Burrich on the fly, goes to the baseline. Super move down the lane in the lunge. This, this young man could play. Six points by Dan Burrich. He made a stop and go that really looked nice. There's a transition game. Groupie shoots. Arnold oh, tipped so it in. right, follow up on, on Groupie's shot. Here we see it. There's the tip in on the on the uh, or the follow up on the missed shot by Groupie. Super action, 22, 14, De La Salle, 45 seconds to go in the first half. Well, there's a big fella stepping out on a momentary switch, a hedging move defensively. Very 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 block rebound. Here comes the break game. Inside Groupie, fake steps in, puts it up and in. I think Jerry Tokar's going to stop this action. Jerry country companies agents in Illinois are happy to be co-sponsoring these basketball telecasts and we certainly hope you are enjoying our presentation once again Frank a reminder that tonight's session begins at 7 15 our broadcast time at 7 o'clock game number three of the quarterfinal round Chicago Gordon Tech with a record of 24 and 6 going against the rails footers of Lincoln Lincoln's record 29 and 1 and the fourth and final game of the quarterfinals this evening along about 8 30 Matches Downers Grove South with a record of 26 and 4 against Chicago Manley. Manley's record is 28 and 1. As we were pointing out at the top of the broadcast, there are four teams 
one in each of the four games today that have lost just one game each. One of those was already gone. Peoria Richwoods. Richwoods had a record of 27 and 1. They lost a one-pointer to Aurora West in the opener here. And Effingham, 28 and 1, trailing throughout most of this game and making a small comeback now with 26 seconds to go in the half, trailing 22 to 16. Okay. Chicago De La Salle with the lead and the ball. Jerry Tokars will toss it in, the son of the coach. Into Callaway. Tokars plays either guard or forward. Steve Bushu guards Callaway in the back. Matchup of number 11. 18 seconds. Obviously, De La Salle wants one shot. They have a six-point lead. Backing away now is Tokars. 11, 10, 9. Working in his pole. His shot is blocked by Groupie. Taken... Thrown back in underneath the own basket and Cole laid it in with four seconds. Arnold got, made a mistake. Yeah, that's right. Uh, it's pretty tough for a player that's chasing that ball down not to not to want to keep it alive. And that's what he does. Shots blocked by Groupie. And I think he thought the Groupie was falling right in behind there. He turned and threw it over his shoulder, and it was a, a possible three-pointer. Fourth team foul on Effingham, and nobody knows better than Mitch Arnold that he shouldn't have done that. As soon as he saw who grabbed it, he grimaced, and he knew. Do you think uh, Coach Tokars called that play from that last time out? <laughs> Here we go. Up, a three-pointer. Three, two. Here's the length of the court. Bouncing off the top of the bank board. And that's the end of the halftime here in the second quarter final game. The score at the end of the first half. De La Salle 25, Effingham 16. We'll recap the scoring and have some interviews for you after this message from the IHSA. Champagne. I'm Jim Turpin. Alongside me is the coach at York High School. Very much. De La Salle leads Effingham 25 to 16. At halftime, we'll take a look at the scoring. Effingham shot 31% uh, on 7 of 22 in the first half, and only three players scored, as you can see. Dale Groupie, who averages almost 16, had four points. Mitch Arnold, who averages 25, had 10. And Uwe Blop, the center, who averages 17.3, had two. Bushu uh, played and didn't score, as did Neat. And uh, you see over here, Orsborn uh, did not score also for Effingham. The Flaming Hearts shoot 22 times and make seven. For Chicago De La Salle, they shot 26 times and made 12 hoops, 46% in the first half. They were led in scoring by Bernard Cole with nine points. You see Jerry Tokars had two. Mike Williams has eight points. Williams also has three fouls and was out of the game. It's a factor. Dan Burridge, the quarterback of the team, with six and Bernard Cole with nine round out the scoring for Chicago De La Salle, who shot 46% and lead 25 to 16 at halftime. Now let's pause five seconds for station identification. You are watching. Second half, uh, first half came to a close, and they came out with Mitch Arnold regaining his confidence in shooting. Arnold's the kind of a young man who's going to have that kind of shooting. If he starts cold, he stays with it and comes back on. Now stay tuned for the second half action. We'll be ready for the tip-off in just a minute. One of your network sponsors, DeKalb Ag Research. Heinold Commodities brings you the pulse of America's basic wealth. The commodity markets, a sophisticated, booming financial... Action and Dick Campbell have a couple of questions in this game. Number one, can Effingham improve on their 31% shooting in the, in the next half? And number two, will Mike Williams stay out of foul trouble? It's all to do with tempo, uh, with the transition game for Effingham. They're going to shoot their normal 56% if they can get flying up and down the court. But when they're in a slowdown game, uh, I think they measured a little bit more and then just are not going to be that good a shooting team under those circumstances. Even uh, De La Salle is under their 53% season sh shooting. At, uh, at the half, they were 46. I look for the, the Flaming Hearts to get right back in it here in this third quarter. Let's see if the tempo doesn't pick up for Effingham. 25-16 is the score at halftime. The first quarter score was 12-4. De La Salle in the lead. Effingham with the ball. Uwe Blop at 7-2 and a half goes into the pivot. Mitch Arnold's down there on the same side with him low. Out front starting at guard is Steve Bushu, number 11, for Effingham with the ball there. That's Brad Neat. Downstairs, Uwe Blop slapped away by Mike Williams. Williams back in the lineup after being replaced with three personals in the second quarter. They're going to put that ball inside around Williams, I'm sure, and see if they can't get the fourth one on him. And he has his foul prone. Here comes Mitch Arnold, stop and pop. De La Salle goes after the ball, and it hit 
it hit off of Dale Groupie's foot and a good break for De La Salle. Good hustle. Yes, that's right. Uh, just a second ago or at the end of the half, uh, a ball tried to be retrieved was a, a bad play there. It uh, turned out to be a good play, but it was way out where there couldn't be any damage at the half court. This team lost to the Maine South, the eventual winner in the quarterfinals a year ago, De La Salle, and a foul on Dale Groupie. His first foul. So De La Salle will throw it in. 20 is Jerry Tokars. They come outside, and Callaway has a left-hand dribble to Tokars in the corner. Missed the shot. Williams got the board. And it's stripped away by Mitch Arnold. Nicely done. Well, that was done. That was a quick hands. Uh, Williams is ready to take that thing right up through there and, and put it on the black for, uh, backboard, but uh, Mitch reached in, snapped it away from him. Neat's going to try an outside shot. Groupie rebound, steps in and scores. Nice offensive basket off the board. Uh, there's a lot of lot of body contact down there by the two big boys, one on each team, uh, Uwe and, um, and Mike Williams. Four points by Groupie. Still only three players have scored for Effingham. Callaway. For De La Salle, the Meteors have Burrich outside. Stutter step to the lane. Hanging pass to Williams. Nice drop off. Nice drop off. He's right at the last second. Looks like he's going for the shot. He kicked it out to Williams. Williams powers it up. Has 10. Here's the other Ube, end. Block. Missing. Thought I heard a whistle. Didn't. Mitch Arnold rebound and scored. I thought maybe some of the players thought they did too. Mitch Arnold's at both ends of the court. Wherever that ball is, he's uh, he's around it. There he chased that loose ball down, put it back up. Uh, here's a comment about Mitch Arnold. He was 0 for 6 at the start. He's got 12 points already. Yeah, right, right. He's going he's gonna to keep putting them up. You know that. He won't shy away. Dallas Orsborne, 53. 6'3", senior in the lineup for Effingham. Orsborne comes in on the pressure. They give it to Burridge. Orsborne goes up against him in the backcourt. 6.17 to go, third quarter. De La Salle by 7, 27 to 20. Bernard Cole's down low. He turns, didn't get it in. Cole rebounds, can't connect. Burrich missed that. And Burrich got the rebound and the foul. There seems to be some seem to be some quickness down in there. Here we are in the replay. There he goes up quick with it, Bernard Cole. And then Burrich chases down on that weak side. Stepped inside of, uh, of uh, Groupie over on that back side of that defense. Burrich goes to the line where he is 60% successful. That foul was on Orsburn, uh, his first. Burrich scores. 28-20. The Meteors, seven points for Dan Burrich. Tom, heady basketball player. Put them both in. De La Salle by nine. De La Salle presses on the full court. It's a zone. It's a trap. Six minutes and two seconds to go in the third quarter, and Mitch Arnold handles it outside. I think the purpose of that press is to slow uh, Effingham up, not to speed him up, to slow him up. Arnold tries on the baseline. Boy, he's, uh, he's so big and uh, so tall that he can get up above people, and certainly the defensive guards, and shoot that one over top of them. He's got his touch back. He's got 14 points, and he's going to keep uh, Effingham within seven. 5.40 to go, third quarter. 1-4 offense for uh, De La Salle. And there's a foul on Effingham. 41, Dale Groupie grabbed a hold of Burrich as he flew past. Burrich is a penetrator. He's a hard-nosed player. His coach talks about uh, he grew up as a kid uh, on the south side playing in the Park District games. Just looking at Jim Maxson, the Effingham coach. He's been there 13 seasons. He's won 369 games. Burrich turns and shoots. Cole has the rebound. Williams! A little volleyball upstairs. Yeah, right. There, Bernard Cole took it to Uve. He blocked it, but Williams is there to put it back up on uh, on the re rebound. 31-22, De La Salle. And Effingham has the basketball. On the move. Baseline goes Groupie all the way in. Slap back by Cole. Foul on Burrich. Nice block by Cole. And then Burrich reached across, got, got the ball, but a little bit too much. We'll take another look at it here. He puts it up. There's the block by Cole. Knocked down, and he goes, he, uh, Groupie goes up again, and Burrich got a piece of him. Foul was on Burrich, his third foul. Third foul on Burrich, first on the team. Groupie made the free throw. Dale Groupie. 31-23, De La Salle by eight. Burrich and Williams both with three fouls. They're two key players. 
Ube missed that, but Uve Block has the rebound, steps in, missed it. Williams has the next one, split by Arnold, shot good. Great defensive play. Mitch Arnold turned the crowd on, and the sea of red comes to its feet in the assembly hall, 31-24. De La Salle, 16 points by Mitch Arnold. De La Salle in the lead with the ball, but some of the momentum is going toward Effingham now. High lob inside Williams, head down, puts it up, missed it. And a foul on Bernard Cole of De La Salle. I noticed that last time down, Uwe does not extend with his shot. He's, uh, he's seven, two and a half, but his shot is just over the top of his head. I think as he learns more about the game, American style, he's going to release that ball, keep it up higher, and release it to the full advantage of his arm extended. Somebody told me last night that he had a brother, he has a brother in the eighth grade that's either 6'6 six, six or 6'8 six, now. Uwe Block turns and shoots. Orsborn rebounds. He is fouled by Williams of fourth. looked like he reached in there and made a nice steal but uh, we'll take a look in here there's the shot it's partially blocked comes around and Williams reaches in and, and he does get a part of uh, a part of pitch 422 to play in the third quarter is when Mike Williams got his fourth foul number 25 coming in for Dilasau is Michael Zuzki Wisniewski, a 6'5", senior. Williams out. They lose some muscle in the exchange. Groupie was going to pull the trigger, didn't, then does closer. Orsborn rebound. Ball's on the floor. Arnold layup. Arnold comes up with all the loose stuff around that basket. Quite a player. Mitch Arnold puts Effingham within five. 18. Now, De La Salle says timeout at 4.07. LaSalle, De Salle, 31, and Effingham, 26. Country Companies Insurance. In case you missed it earlier, Aurora West eliminated Peoria Richwoods 44-43, and we've got our second spine tingler of the afternoon going as De La Salle leaves Effingham 31-27. 4.07 to play in the third quarter. Burridge in heavy traffic. Gets away on the move up ahead to Tokar. Burridge sees the court very well. Hetty. This is Callaway with a left hand. Quick. Burrich, outside, goes into the lane, block, block by Uwe Block, picked off by the Flaming Hearts, and they are flaming, inside, Groupie, shot, not good, and a whistle, a foul on De La Salle, Scott Wisniewski. Here we go with uh, wheel down the lane, Wisniewski goes up, turned his body into him, and on the follow through, he fouls. Means out of bounds for the Flaming Hearts, 28 and 1. They lost only to Cahokia. So had Richwood. Arnold, stop and pop. Yes! He's definitely warming up. He's getting that shot down from the outside. He's got 20 points. It's a two point game. Effingham is coming on. Callaway comes up. Burridge outside. Goes towards the baseline and stops. This is Jerry Tokar, son of the coach. Bernard Cole, the high post, hemmed in nearly, and Burrich moves on the left-hand dribble. 3.09 to go. Effingham working on defense. The shot goes out by Wisniewski. Picked off by Cole for the layup. Yeah, give Burrich an assist on that. He knocked that, that loose ball inside to Burrich. Cole has 11. Inside to Cole. 2.51 to play, third quarter. De La Salle by four. Mitch Arnold has really warmed up. He lobs it into Groupie off the board. He missed it. Groupie tried to send one off the glass, and Burrich has the ball for De La Salle. The tempo has changed, Frank, since they've gone man-to-man. -man. Uh, Effingham has been very effective in forcing the action through the man-to-man. -man. There's a blocking foul blocking. On, on, on Dallas Orsborn. Second foul on Orsborn and the fourth team foul on He's Effingham. still moving. You see as Dan gets, gets his shoulders ahead. Dan Birch got his shoulders ahead, was able to turn that corner, and uh, Orsborn made the contact. So it's blocking as opposed to charge. Tokars gives a great pass inside to Cole, who lost it off his hands to Effingham. I think that shot came off underneath and hit the back of the part of the support, which made it a violation, and the ball's out of bounds to Effingham. 
Looking at Jerry Tokar's 19 years at Chicago de La Salle, he's won 345 games. Effingham with the basketball. Arnold on the right side. Lob inside. Uve block. Turn. 7 2 man shoots. And Orsborne fouls Burrich on the rebound. Foul is on Orsborne of Effingham. Third foul on Orsborne. The fifth team foul on the Flaming Hearts. Effingham is south of Champaign-Urbana and south of charleston Mattoon. Of course, Chicago out of Cook County and De La Salle on South Wabash Avenue. Chicago, De La Salle. Assistant coaches, Effingham, Glenn Temple, Wayne Rubach, Bob Lawrence. De La Salle, assistants Jim Tracy, Jim Prunty. Eight points for Burrick. Nine. Five-point lead, De La Salle. Effingham scored over 109 times this year. Can they come back? They're down six. 2-11 to play, third period. Frank Bassoni, Dick Campbell, and Jim Turpin at the Assembly Hall in Champaign-Urbana. Pretty close to 10 seconds call here. Very close. Bushu gets up, whips the ball to Arnold. 22 for Arnold, a fine pass from Bushu. I don't think... Coach Tokars wanted that to happen. I think with that press, he wants to recover and get back to his basket defense. Doesn't want to get stretched out. Burrett shoots and misses. Volleyball with the rebound. Effingham has it. They're down by four. A minute 40 in the third. High lob inside to Uwe Block. Taken away by De La Salle. A little too far for the big guy. Yes, right. First turnover this half by Effingham. They've played very well, of course. Well, you gotta walk that ball. At halftime, De La Salle led by nine. Here's a steal by Bushu. He heads for the basket. Calloway goes with him to Arnold. Very nice give off. He could have taken the ball all the way, but he, he got the ball to the money man, and, and Mitch stormed it up within two now. Mitch Arnold has lit up the sky. He's got 24. A two-point game at 104. Tokar slides down and gets to Wisniewski. Who is whacked. Check it. He follows on Brad Neat. Drive to the baseline, little kickoff to Wisniewski, and then from over the top, Brad Neat. Well, Mitch Arnold can put shots up from the city limits, but he's not bad going to the basket either. No, he's all over the court. I, I see uh, the coaches that were recruiting him talked about his ability to, to play all over the court, to do everything well, and he certainly is, uh, has proven that to us today. Scott Wisniewski's foul shot rolls in. His first point. He shoots field goals at 53, but free throws at only 58. This is not a real good free throw shooting team here at De La Salle. 62 percent. Uh, nor is Effingham at 61. There's timeout at 101 in the third. De La Salle leads Effingham 36-33. One of your network sponsors. Well, there you see the score, and De La Salle led by as many as nine points, and then up, up to uh, perhaps even into double figures earlier in the game, but in the teeth of the Effingham Storm, the, the uh, Flaming Hearts are back in this basketball game. This is Wisniewski. He hit it. De La Salle by four. One minute to go on the third. Aurora West has already won. One of these teams will join them in the semifinals. Here's a lob inside to Orsborn. A beautiful pass by Brad Neat. Dallas Orsborn hit it, his first two. De La Salle was in a half court, one, two, two uh, zone defense that last time down. I know it was because of the time being in the last 40 seconds. Here's Bernard Cole, the foul line, hanging and shooting it in. He turned and, and hung. That's right. It was a good description of it. A nice, nice move by Bernard. He's got 13. Mitch That's Arnold done. answers. It doesn't go. A great steal inside by Orsborn. Super play. That uh, that cancels that two at the other end, certainly. 15 seconds in the third. Will De La Salle go for one here now? They're ahead by two. 10 seconds. Burridge backs in. Burridge at the foul line. The shot is not good. Four seconds. 3-2, Effingham's not going to get one off. That's it. The end of the third quarter. De La Salle, 39, and Effingham, 37. And one of your next... Effingham, Flaming Hearts, outscored De La Salle, 21-14 in the third quarter. They're within two, Dick Campbell. 
And when are they going to have to put Mike Williams back in for DeSalle? I think Coach Tokars feels that as long as they have the lead, they'll they'll try to hold him out. And if they lose the lead, I would guess he'll bring him back in. Uh, I think it's psychologically advantageous to have him still there, being able to play him if, uh, if things get worse. The 6'6", 220-pound center of DeSalle, of course, out with four personals. Uwe Blop tips. That was a double tip. Arnold then tipped it in the backcourt to Buchu. Well, Effingham is going to shoot for a tie. They were down 18 to 6 in this game, but they've come roaring back. Offensively, they are very, very good, of course. Mitch Arnold shoots again. Off the ball! Constant pressure applied on the middle of that defense by uh, Uwe high and then low, and uh, Mitch popping in there low and then stepping up high. That time he came down the lane and glanced it off the glass. 26 points, and the game is tied as Mitch Arnold rejects the shot by Callaway. Here we go with a rub down the lane. He put it up, and here, here comes three people, but Mitch is the one that knocked it out of bounds. Here's nice out-of-bounds play. Oh, Burridge got it in. They ran a little pick and a screen on the out-of-bounds and got it in. 12 points for Burridge. Here's in half quarter right here. De La Salle by two. Here comes Arnold again. Boy, he's some act. He's got the hot hand now. He's uh, laying back his ears and taking it to him. 28. He's got the touch like suede. Here's the whistle. Jerry Tokar says, let's talk about this. It's 7.08 to go in the fourth quarter. The game is tied at 41. One of your... The De La Salle cheerleaders entertain as the score is tied at 41 to 41. Gentlemen, one team's from the far north, one's from the far south. They've met in the middle to prove they're both awfully good. That's right, and Mike Williams is now back in that lineup. And the matchup is uh, uh, Orsborn on, on Williams. Orsborn 6'3", Mike Williams 6'6", six, six, and 220. Back in for De La Salle. The game is tied with seven minutes to play. Who is going to go on to the semifinals? Could be decided here in the final seven. Cole, a runner, doesn't go. Rebound, Brad Meat. Effingham running. Bushu waits and shoots. Tipped in by Orsborn. Right over the top. There's the lead for Effingham. Orsborn has six. Dallas, Orsborn got there and tapped at home. Now, De La Salle must answer. Mike Williams is gripped. And then Cole gets it back, gives it Callaway. Beautiful, beautiful kick down. Bernard Cole's gotten hit in the eye there. They're trying to get the officials there. Yeah, they've got his their attention. Looked to me like Cole might have gotten a, uh, a finger in the eye. Frank, that was another attempted save by Effingham. They tried to throw that ball back in. The, the exact same thing happened at the uh, end of the first half. They got the ball to the wrong team, and boy, those were some big points. Effingham has very quick hands down there. They've stripped that ball on somebody putting it on the floor a, a numerous times in the course of this ball game. We're happy to tell you Bernard Cole is fine. And Effingham has the basketball with 6.20. This game is tied. How's this for quarterfinal action? We'll have two more games tonight. Uwe Blatt has the ball slapped away from him and picked up by De La Salle. And the Effingham crowd wanted a contact call there. Burridge comes on the right. Inside, Mike Williams turns on Blatt to the goal, missed it. Wisniewski blocked by Uwe Blatt. Effingham runs. Up ahead of the pack is Bushu. Back to Arnold. Very nice break. Great ball movement. Williams was trying to defend the whole court there, and they kept that ball moving and his head turning. Right up a new chart. 30 points for Mitch Arnold. 45-43 Effingham. 5-38 to play. The Meteors try to tie it as Burrick shoots it up and is fouled by Brad Neat. Burrick in traffic. He'll... Here we come. Rub off that rub. He puts it on the floor, gets up and hangs. And, and... Uh, certainly Brad Deet was in there and made contact. Second foul on Brad Deet. And now Dan Burridge goes to the line. He'll shoot two. He'll have a chance to tie the game. Didn't get the first one. The Effingham crowd goes wild. He's four out of five at the free throw line now for this game. He hit that. Effingham by one and the ball. A lot of time though for 5.33 to play. 5.33. Now let's watch it. Juve blocked down low. Here's a whistle and a foul on De La Salle as Dallas Orsborn went flying to the basket. 
because uh, defensively down there, it looks like there's some sort of a combination. It looks like Bernard Cole. Yeah, there's a cross the top. We've got a zone defense uh, with a man-to-man -man on Mitch Arnold by Bernard Cole. Foul was on Burridge. His fourth. Burridge has four fouls. The free throw shooter, Dallas Orsborn, only shoots 42%. And didn't get that. But Mitch Arnold's got the rebound with 30 points, makes it 32. He takes it right to Wisniewski, taking it up over top and off the glass. Effingham by three. 5.15 to go. Now the Meteors have to come back against the Flaming Hearts. What a basketball game. Twice, De La Salle led by 12. Effingham has stormed back to lead. They want to bring that ball to Williams. He's posted up in there. Here goes Burrich on the move. It's Bumped and fouled by Brad Neat. Yeah, Burridge trying to Burridge penetrating down that lane. Turns that corner. Neat trailing him. Gets into him and the foul. It's the third foul on uh, on on uh, Brad Neat. Frank, anytime somebody gets around 30 or so, we begin going to the record books. But the record for single game scoring in the state tournament is 49. Jerry Coomerley of Danville Storm did that against Rock Falls back in 1958. 49. So he's a long way from that. Free throw is good by Burrich, who has 14 himself. It's a two-point game now in favor of Effingham in the red. Aurora West beat Richwoods by one. We've got another tight one. Two for Burrich. The game is a one-pointer in favor of Effingham at 47-46. There's 4.52 to play. Neat. As the Flaming Hearts spread wide as Orsborne at the foul line knocks it in. Horseborn, nice shooter, gets up nicely. Uh, Effingham has not been in very many close ball games, but they're playing this one close to the best and, and executing extremely well. Eight for Orsborn. Mike Williams inside, missed it. Rebound, nice. Cole, rejected by Block. Wisniewski misses. And the next rebound comes to Orsborn of Effingham. Foul on De La Salle. Callaway reaching in there. What an effort on that board. There were, there's Jerry Tokars. He doesn't like it. Uh, that was quite a flurry down in there. There's Wojcicki putting it up and a tip. And now we're trying to clear out Orsborn is uh, is fouled as, as Callaway reaches in and gets part of his arm. Dallas Orsborn will go back to the free throw line. He's a senior at 6'3". He missed his one a moment ago, and as we mentioned, he shoots him at 42. All of his eight points are in the second half. He's now nine. Effingham by four. Well, the assembly hall has really filled up here. And now there's a whistle and a timeout on the court at 424. Effingham by four. One of your network sponsors is Country Companies Insurance. High school basketball at its best. 424 to go. Effingham by four. Turnovers in the second half, Frank. Effingham's only had three and uh, at eight in the first half, so that's 11 for the ball game. De La Salle has turned it over five times here in the second half. It's 12 total for them in the ball game. How about timeouts remaining in the game? Well, we got De La Salle still has one and Effingham still has three. Thanks, Dick. Dallas Orsborn heads to the free throw line to try to increase the Effingham lead to five. The 42% free throw shooter going up and made a couple big ones. Ten points for Orsborn. Now De La Salle must get a hoop this time down for 17. They need a good shot. They look inside to Williams. He's there. He turns and shoots it in. Power move. Turned in right into the big guy. Went right up over him. I think he feels confident that he can shoot over top. 14 points for Mike Williams. Effingham by three. There is four minutes to play in the game. Bushu on the move. All the way inside stops. Back out to Brad Neat. This Uwe block looks inside to Arnold. Has the ball slapped away. Arnold gets it back. Mitch Arnold came out, shot 0 for 6, and since then he's rung up 30 points. They were going straight man to man now, and it's uh, here's Cole trying to play play Arnold. He fouled him on the move as Arnold put his head down and went to the hoop. He's got a problem there. You can't get off of Arnold the way he shoots, and if you crowd him, he'll put it down and take it strong to the hoop. So you can only work with percentages and hope that maybe you can create some problems. There's Coach Maxton with his shirt off, or his coat off. That three-piece suit that he and his wife picked out for this thing has long been discarded, and he's down to his working clothes. Mitch Arnold shoots it in. 
He's got 33 points. Mitch Arnold with 33. He's too tall for a little guy. He'll take him in and post him up. He's too quick for the big guys. He made them both. And a young man who's heading for the University of Illinois puts Effingham ahead by five. Here's Callaway at the foul line. He shoots, but a whistle first and a foul on Effingham. Steve Bushu. Yes, it, uh, the Effingham people thought that, uh, that he had charged. He made the turn, cross over with his left hand, and true enough, uh, uh, Bushu was still moving. He did not get his feet across and was not planted. And uh, on the other hand, uh, Callaway was able to, to get the corner turn. In the super sectional, Mitch Arnold had 31 points and 16 rebounds as they beat East St. Louis Lincoln 74 to 58. This is Callaway. He missed it. Uwe Block has the rebound, and Effingham has the ball and a five-point advantage. They've got three minutes and 22 seconds to go to protect it and go on to the semifinals. Now it's De La Salle's turn to come back as Mitch Arnold fades. Good! Mitch, Mitch has got him in trouble now. He got him posted on the block, shoot the turnaround jump shot. This 36 point. Amazing exhibition by Mitch Arnold. Wheeling is Burrich. His shot doesn't go. He's got it back. And he's fouled. Mitch reached Fritz in that time and they, they caught him. He shook his hand, head to acknowledge that he had been caught. Uh, he's got the quick hands around that hoop. He's done that often now. We'll see it. Burrich shoots, goes and gets his own rebound, puts it down, and there he is. Reaches in right at that point. Number 43. Frank Effingham took the lead 43 to 41 with 6.37 to go. That's the first time. They've had a five-point lead a couple of times. Now this is the largest lead at seven. And Max and Don, who's been 13 years at Effingham, wants this one more than anyone. Burrich, on the other hand, for De La Salle, tries to answer. Burrich missed it. Effingham has the basketball. Here's a steal by Cole in the backcourt. Gives De La Salle some life. Off the board, he missed it. Arnold rebounds at 250. Effingham 55. De La Salle 48. Uwe Block. The big guy with a little bit of room got up and stuck it. That's his fourth point of the ballgame. It's a nine-point lead for Effingham, and they were down 12 to 4 at the quarter and down by a dozen twice. Foul inside on the big man. Uwe Block. His name is spelled U-W-E. That's the first name. Then B-L-A-B, pronounced Block. Third foul on him. A West German exchange student has really come along. 14 now in the game by Mike Williams. As Effingham calls timeout at 235. Effingham 57. De La Salle 48. We've got Uwe for a year. I wonder what we have to give in return. I imagine we'll have to send over Bo Derrick for a year. <laughs> or two players to be named later. <laughs> Country Companies Insurance and DeKalb Ag Research, your network co-sponsors, are happy to be able to present this exciting high school basketball action, and they hope you'll join us again tonight at 7. Again tomorrow, 11 a.m. for the semifinals. The title game is tomorrow night at 8 o'clock as the Gordon, or the uh, De La Salle cheerleaders entertain. And here comes the Flaming Hearts. You almost said Gordon Tech. That's I tonight. Sure the first game tonight, Gordon Tech against Lincoln. Gordon Tech into that ball game with a record of 24 and 6. And the Lincoln Rail Splitters are 29 and 1. And to wrap up the quarterfinal round, a game that many people have been waiting to see. Downers Grove South, a team that has probably had uh, the toughest road to get here. They have really beat some good teams against Chicago Manly, a ball club that features the Big Russ Cross and has a record of 28 and 1. So those are the two games tonight, but they'll have to go some to match these two, Frank. They really will. They say Russell Cross, they call him Cross the Boss. And uh, we'll find out tonight. Hope you'll join us at 7. First, back to this action, 2.35 to go, as De La Salle tries now to catch Effingham. The Flaming Hearts lead by 9. And Mike Williams shoots 1 in bonus. Averages 14 points a game, a 66% foul shot. He hit the first. He's got 15 in the game. This is the young man that was out with an injury until the regionals he's back strong missed it effingham has two minutes and a half to hold on to an eight-point lead pressure man to man they're looking for some double ups here when they get the opportunity they've only scored under 65 points once this year but they'd be happy to score under it if they won bushu turns top of the key to neat and a whistle by the under official 
Because this is that point in the ball game when you're behind to this at eight points, you've got to go out and shake the ball loose. You've got to gamble a little bit, and uh, and you're often going to send the other team to the free throw line to, to convert. And they're going to have to make them. They're going to have to get the ball down. Foul is on Jerry Tokars. Brad Neat will shoot. He averages eight and a half points a game. He has one in bonus. Perfect. That's his first point of the game. But it gives Effingham a nine-point lead with 2.17. Frank Bassoni, Dick Campbell, and Jim Turpin at courtside at the Assembly Hall watching Neat shoot and miss. But Arnold rebounds, steps in, and out of bounds. Stepped on the end line. So De La Salle, who's now got to put some points on the board in a hurry. But 2.14 is still time if they hit their shots. Burrich, outside left. Williams wheels and puts it up, block by block, and a foul on Williams. He's gone. He missed the shot, and he went after the basketball. There's jubilation out there on the court because Big Michael has fouled out. Uve coming over here to, to offer him some condolences on falling out of the ball game and a gesture of, of, uh, of sportsmanship. Well, Mike Williams, here it comes. Lunges it up. The miss, he goes back in uh, after the Zuve had rebounded, and he got him with the body trying to reach in. Marvelous work there with the camera. Here's Jerry Tokar trying to come up with some last moment help here off the bench. Mike Williams, though, will be back next year. He's only a junior. And the way De La Salle's going here third in the last four years, they may be here again. Kokar's, of course, taking his full time to replace Mike Williams. That's his right. Well, they're coming in with a defensive player, undoubtedly. Dave Fields, a quick guard that can maybe help shake that ball loose out there on Bushu. Uh, remember again, Frank, that uh, this, this is the team here, the De La Salle, without Williams, that was able to uh, share the title in the tough Catholic League uh, race this year. So they've played without him, and they've played very well. 2.05 to go in this game. Effingham 58. And De La Salle, 49. And right now, it's all up to De La Salle to just hit everything they throw up there. Uh, the timeouts by De La Salle have been exhausted now. They have none left. And one of the techniques the coach likes to use if he's behind is to have saved a few and be able to score and call timeout immediately, giving them a chance to come off the timeout, uh, set up your press, and, and maybe score again, and, and once again call timeout. You're able to keep that thing going. Uh, Keep that, uh, keep that clock stopped and be able to score and, and get organized in between times. But they'll not be able to do this. The clock will continue to run here for De La Salle. No matter what, De La Salle, an outstanding representative of the Chicago Catholic League, have won 23 games this year. The Mid-State Conference for Effingham, who's won 28 out of 29. I think, uh, I think Effingham is for real. I think we found that out because they're playing a team here in De La Salle that came through a very tough area. And they're, uh, they played some exceptional competition over the season, and, and I think Effingham is going to be heard from right down to the wire. And you know, Dick Campbell, no matter how this one comes out, as you mentioned, I think they are vindicated because they came up here in 1968 with a record of 30-0, and 0, and a lot of people thought it was because they weren't playing perhaps as tough a competition because uh, they, they lost in the quarterfinals on that one. But uh, they've uh, played an outstanding team here today, and uh, two minutes to go have the lead. One of their fans was talking about that before the game. He said, you know, we lost that game 85 to 52 and we were unbeaten coming in. But he said then, this is a new year. And so it is, as Blot missed the free throw and it's out of bounds to Effingham with 2.03. Bernard Cole tried to uh, save that, stepped on the end line. Effingham, two minutes and three seconds away from going to the final four. Mitch Arnold outside. It didn't go down. Orsborne got the rebound, and he was held from behind. Orsborne is a workhorse in there. He's done some great. He's done some great things in this second half. There's a shot put up, and uh, Orsborne going after the ball. Oh, he's fouled by Jerry Tokars. His second foul. Now yeah, Orsborne's been tough on the boards. He's done some very nice things in there. He's had eight, ten points here in the second half. He missed that one. He had ten. Arnold's got the rebound. He missed it. Uwe Blop has the next one. And we were screened by the official and then a whistle. He got fouled. Okay, the foul is on number 10. 
Dave Fields for De La Salle, a 5'9 senior who came in late, replacing Williams. Juve's got that problem of the big men on the free throw line. Uh, he shot 42% from the line. What a lift. Dallas Orsborn gave Effingham, and I'll tell you, Groupie just came back in, and he's a fine player, too. They've got some players. Orsborn went out with 10 points. Here's Uwe Block with four. They make it five. Seven, two and a half, 230, a 17-year-old junior. West German exchange student, and I understand he's eligible to play next year under certain conditions again for Effingham. Here it is. Didn't go. It's a 10-point lead and a minute and 50 seconds to go. Effingham in the lead by 10. Pole outside. This is field. On the baseline, it goes inside to Cole. Shot flatted away by Groupie. And Mead has the ball. 133 now. Groupie comes up 41. High lob. Arnold gives it back to Blop. He scores. But when Arnold's got the ball, a lot of things can happen, can't they, Frank? Uh, he dished it off that time to the big man. Big man just rolled it over the, over the rim. It's a 12-point lead. Arnold doesn't even look like he's perspiring. Burrich turns and shoots and knocks it in. Dan Burridge, here's the length of the court pass to Block. He's going to dribble. He's going to dunk it. The big guy with the stuff. The fans, the red, the red up, people up there are going wild over that stuff. Sauerkraut thunder, they call it in Effingham. It's a 12-point lead with 55 seconds. Calloway's shot won't go. Calloway again is fouled by Groupie. Well, they didn't get their 91, but they had second, uh, quite a second half and they were able to uh, score a lot right here. Here we go with the dunk. The big guy coming down. He's up there and stuffs it home. Sauerkraut, what is it? Sauerkraut power? Thunder. Thunder. Sauerkraut 16 thunder. points is all Effingham had at the end of the half, four at the quarter. And they lead with 52 seconds, 63 to 51. Well, gentlemen, it sure looks like it'll be Aurora West against Effingham in the first game tomorrow. What about tonight? Who do you like, Gordon Tech or Lincoln? Well, Gordon Tech comes out of that tough Catholic League again, and, um, and of course, Lincoln with their Collinsville-type 1-2-2 full-court press have uh, have just been sensational all year. I, uh, it'll be a match of that, that pressing attack defensively against Gordon Tech's excellent guards. McElvey and Perry are great ball handlers, and uh, they would be less bothered by that kind of a defense than a lot of teams, but I think that's a toss-up. How about uh, Chicago Manley and Downers Grove South? Well, Downers Grove came the tough way. They're the giant killer. Uh, I just, uh, it's hard for me to imagine they could do it one more time. We've heard so much about Russell Cr uh, Cross, that, that large uh, front line of Manley's, but the big question there would be, how about the injury to Russell? Will he be able to play three games in 31, 32 hours? Uh, and uh, we'll have to see just how, how much he has to favor that knee. And as Dick said, they've had the, the toughest uh, road to get to Champaign. They beat Lockport 40 to 38, a rated team. Then they beat St. Lawrence 71 to 60 and topped it off by beating undefeated Ridge Central 54 to 52. So they have been in some games, the last three in particular. And uh, once you get down there, they have a 26 and four record. You just never know. Maybe you can do it one more time against Manly. Effingham is doing it one more time on De La Salle. And De La Salle got off to the right foot, but Effingham had enough to come back. And with 52 seconds to go, Callaway shoots it in for De La Salle, his third point. Well, there's some excellent teams in this field. We saw two good ones in the first game and two more here. Here's the next one up and not good. And Uve has the rebound for Effingham. 63-52, and there's only 46 seconds to go in the game. Groupie to Arnold. Arnold looks at the hoop, comes outside. He was bumped, and Arnold will go to the foul line. Mitch Arnold, a 6'5 senior guard, and Mitch Arnold has so far tonight, or this afternoon, 36 points. Mitch, Arnold. And Mitch was not too anxious to get the two points there. He looked like he wanted to spread it around a little bit, uh, but he did draw the foul. Here's the touch. 37 for Arnold. 64-52 for Effingham. Well, they showed a lot coming back against an outstanding basketball team. Next free throw is home. And the South leads the North in this matchup. Here's Cole. He got slapped away by a blop, and he got called for traveling because he landed with the ball. 91 points a ball game. Uh, Effingham's had 49 in the second half, Frank, after 16 in the first half. 
Bushu flies past his man. He's going to go all the way in for a left-hand layup. Nice little player. He's done a lot of things since he's been out here. He shakes the ball loose. Good ball handler. Unselfish little guy. Their transition game is really very good as Uwe Block fouled Jerry Tokar. Well, when Effingham gets it out, they can go. You know, Frank, it just occurs to me that one of the, perhaps one of the most important plays in this entire ball game was when Coach Jim Maxson took uh, Mitch Arnold out of the ball game. Remember, he had missed early on about four. At least a 10. This is Jerry Tokar's and his third point. 23 seconds to go in this second quarter final game. And Tokars hits them both. But Effingham still has a 13 point lead. And that's the ball. The backcourt, Brad Neat. Comes up and is trapped and is fouled. Foul is on Tokars. Fourteen seconds to play in this one. Third foul. I think uh, on Tokar. I think Frank that Mitch Arnold might be described as eleven. That's a ten who doesn't even get in foul trouble. <laughs> Amen to that. Brad Neat is going to shoot for his first point, but he's not in there for scoring. He does a lot of other things for Effingham. Jim Maxidon, their head coach of Effingham, just yelling now, no fouls. Eleven seconds. Good advice. Inside it goes to Fields for a shot along the baseline. Dave Fields hit it. That's four seconds left. Now a whistle. And there's a, a technical foul been called, I think. Uh, yeah, Dan, Dan Burridge reached in and knocked the ball out of the inbounds man's hands, and uh, that's a technical. So with the tee, what was the tee called for? Uh, for reaching in and knocking the ball out of bounds. Dan Burridge reached okay. and knocked it out of bounds for the man who was, who was putting the ball in bounds. Mitch Arnold at the foul line. He's got 39 points now. 39. Once again, I'd repeat, the state record is 49, set by Jerry Kimmerly of Danville Schlarman. He plays as if he had written a commandment or two on scoring. Here's a wild pass by Effingham. Four seconds to go. Effingham leads by a dozen. And De La Salle is going to go down here. That's the ball game. The final score, Effingham 68 and De La Salle 56. Now here's the scoring for you quickly. First of all, for uh, Effingham, they were led by Mitch Arnold with 39, Dallas Horsborn 10, Juve Blop 9, Dale Groupie 7, Steve Bouchou 2, and Brad Neat 1. For Chicago De La Salle, Michael Williams with 15, he fouled out. Dan Burridge had 17, 13 for Bernard Cole. Scott Wisniewski had two, Jerry Tokars had four, Dave Calloway had three, and Dave Fields two. The victory to Effingham, and on they go. They'll play Aurora West tomorrow afternoon in the first semifinal game tonight. Remember, our broadcast time is 7 o'clock, tip-off time 7.15 for Gordon Tech against Lincoln, followed by Downers Grove South and Chicago Manley. Thank you, Jim Turner.